Okay, now we understand a little bit more about observables, we're going to take a look at using them to help us persist our login. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to our account service first of all. And what we're going to do is make use of that pipe operator I was talking about so that we can do something with the response that we get back from the API. Now we know that we receive a user DTO or at least that's what the API is sending back to us. So we want to do something when that comes back and what we want to do is we can do something with this data inside the HTTP post before we've subscribed to it. Nothing's going to happen still even if we use the pipe and use some functionality from RxJS. So first of all what we're going to do is use this pipe method and we open some parentheses and anything that we put inside this pipe now is going to be an RxJS operator. Now what we want to do is we want to map and we want to use the map function from RxJS which normally comes in automatically but looks like this time is going to need a bit of help. It, at least in my case it may import directly for yourself but it's not doing so in my case. So what I'm going to do at the top here is just import map from and we get this from RxJS forward slash operators. Now this works just like the map function in JavaScript. What we do with this is we apply a given project function to each value emitted by the source observable and emit the resulting values as an observable. Okay, so what we want to do in this case is we want to get our response that we get back from the server and we'll stick with using any for now until we're familiar with TypeScript, which we'll talk about a bit later. We'll just stick with using any for the time being because it's convenient and then we'll open up curly brackets so that we can add some statements inside here. Now we're going to be working with this response inside this map function. What do we want to do with this response? Well, first of all, we want to get the user from the response. So I'm just going to say const user equals response. And then I'm going to check and say if user as in we either have a user or we do not have a user after we do this, then what I'm going to do is I'm going to populate the user object we get back in local storage in the browser. So I'm going to say local storage and we can use the set item and we're going to give this item a key of user and then we're going to take the object we get back and stringify it. So we're going to use the json.stringify method and pass in the user object. Now when we subscribe or when we log in, because we're subscribing in our nav component, then this function is going to run and it's going to populate our user inside local storage in the browser. What we'll also do inside here is we'll add a logout method. And what we'll do is say local storage dot remove item and we'll use the key of user. Now what we will do is start to use TypeScript and what we'll do is we're going to create a type for our user and in order to do this we'll create a new folder inside our app folder called models. And inside here we're just going to create a new file and we're going to call it user.ts. Now what we're going to do inside here is we're going to say export interface and we're going to call it user and interfaces in TypeScript are a little bit different to interfaces in C Sharp. When we use an interface in TypeScript we can use it to specify that something is a type of something. Now in this case we're going to have a username which is going to be a string and we're going to have a token which is going to be a string. And I'm going to talk about TypeScript in a bit more detail shortly but for now we're just going to go along with this and give our interface two properties, the username and the token. Now in our account service we're going to go back to our response and we know our response is going to be a type of the user object or the user type we've just created. So what we can do is specify user and we'll get the auto import from the models here. So we'll select this and now what we can see if we add a period after the response we can see that we've got our two properties inside there. Now we're not doing anything with the user special inside here to justify the use of the TypeScript interface we've just created. But what we are going to do is we're going to create 
unobservable to store our user in. And the way that we're going to do this, we're going to declare this as a private property and we're going to call it current user source. And we're going to set this to a type of observable. Now, this is kind of a special type of observable called a replay subject. And a replay subject is kind of like a, a buffer object. It's going to store the values inside here. And any time a subscriber subscribes to this observable, it's going to emit the last value inside it, or however many values inside it that we want to admit. Now, we're going to give this replay subject a type of user because that's what we're going to store inside this replay subject. And then we tell it how many previous values do we want it to store. Now, we're only interested in one value here. So we're just going to add the value of one. And this means it's the size of our buffer. How many versions of the current user are we, are we going to store? Well, it's just a user object for the current user. So we only need one of them. And this is either going to be null or it's going to be the current user object. And then what we do is we say current user and by convention, because this is going to be an observable, we give it the dollar sign at the end. And then we say that the current user dollar is equal to list dot current user source as an observable. And then what we're going to do in addition to adding our user to local storage, we're also going to set our current user or the observable, the replay subject, we're going to set this to the current user we get back from our API. So we're going to say list.currentUserSource.next, which is how we set the next value inside here, and we're going to pass it the user. Now what we'll also do is we'll add a helper method here called setCurrentUser, and we'll pass in a user and set it to user and what we'll say here is list.currentSource.user or currentSource.next and pass in the user. And yes, of course, we could have just used this method inside here, but I've got a reason for not doing that at this moment in time. And what we'll do for the logout is we'll also say list.currentUserSource.next and we'll set this equal to null. Now what we want to do is be able to persist our login here. So in our root app component, so we'll open up the app component. What we want to do here is take a look inside the browser local storage and see if we've got a key or an object with the key of user. And what we'll do is we'll create a new method and we'll call it set current user inside here. Inside the app component, we'll just use the same name that we used previously. And inside this method, what we'll do, we'll add a variable called user which is a type of user and we're going to set this equal to and we need to bring in the user object and add this to our imports and what we're going to use from this because we stringified the object inside local storage then we use json.pass to get the object out of its stringified form into our user object here so we're going to say local storage.getItem and then we're going to pass in the user and what we can do then is bring in our account service into our app component. So we'll say private account service and call it account service. And then we can say this account service and set current user and pass in the user object. And what we also need to do is call this method when we initialize this component. So what we'll do is say this set current user inside the ng on init method here as well. So we're interacting with a few different components here to set this up. So please be careful with what we're doing. So then what we can do is we can go back to our nav components to the nav component itself, the TypeScript file. And first of all, we can use the logout from the account service in here. So we'll say this account service and then we'll use the logout method from there. But what we also want to do is interrogate our account service and take a look inside that current user observable. Now what we can do here and what we'll do temporarily, we'll say get current user and inside this method we can say this account service and we want to take a look at our current user observable. 
Now, because this is an observable, nothing's going to happen until we subscribe to the observable. So we need to subscribe to this. Now, our current user holds a user object. And what we can specify then is what we want to do with this user. Now, we don't really want to do anything with this user, but what we can do with it is say this logged in is equal to, and then we can use double exclamation marks and specify our user. And the double exclamation marks here turn our object into a Boolean. Now, our user is either null or it's a user object, but if we use the double exclamation marks here, we're effectively saying if the user is null, then this means it's false. And if the user is something, then it, then it works out to be true. And what we can also do, because we're subscribing, we can also take care of any errors at this point and say console.log and error. And what we also need to do here is because we're getting the current user, we want to do this inside our ng on init and call this function to go and get the current user from the account service. So with all this in place, if we go back to our browser and let's take a look at our applications local storage. So we go onto the application tab and take a look at local storage and our local storage is currently empty. Let's once again log in as Bob with his password. And what we see is that the local storage now is populated with our user object and we can see the token and the username inside there. Now, because we're subscribing to the current user observable, in our nav component, then what we should find is that when we refresh our page, our login is persisted. And indeed it is. We can even close our browser down, restart our browser, and our login will still be persisted because inside our app component, we're making the effort to go and get the token from local storage or getting the user object from local storage, and then we're setting that in our account service. And then our nav component is subscribing to that observable in the account service and then setting the logged in status to the current user. But this is okay, but it's not particularly clean. So what we'll take a look at next is using the async pipe to do this.